Hello and welcome to video number three, Stakeholder Needs and Requirements Definition Process from the series Mastering the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the NCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be your tour guide today. So as we introduced in the previous uh, um, videos, the, uh, the combination of uh, complex systems along with complex life cycles requires a more systematic, structured approach to engineering. And this process is captured in the System Eng Engineering Handbook with the system life cycle processes and activities. So there are a total of 59 system engineering life cycle process and activities. And these are grouped into seven uh, groups. The uh, process that we're going to look at in this video is the second in the technical processes and this is the stakeholder needs and requirements definition process. This is uh, a follow-on to the business or missions analysis process and is one of the first steps in generating system requirements for the product uh, or system under development. So the learning objectives for this video is uh, who and what are stakeholders what is the purpose of the stakeholder needs and requirements definition process? What are the outputs of the process, the inputs, and the process activities? Uh, we're going to introduce a little short discussion on stakeholder interactions and uh, cooperation and tensions between stakeholders, and then look at the contents of the stakeholder requirements specification. So the um, stakeholder needs, requirements, and definition process is defined in the System Engineering Handbook as using the enterprise level cutoffs that was previously defined in the business and mission analysis, um, requirements engineers lead stakeholders from business operations to a structured process to elicit stakeholder needs in the form of system level upcon. So the idea here is you take the output of the business and missions analysis process and, um, and through a interaction with stakeholders, um, generate the requirements. Um, so that third bullet says that the stakeholders' needs are then transformed by requirements engineers into a formal set of stakeholder requirements, and all of that is formalized in the stakeholder requirements specification. So in um, plain language, we're going to generate requirements, and we're going to get those requirements from interactions with stakeholders. So just very briefly, um, the stakeholders are anybody who's going to touch the system at one point or another. In terms of operations, uh, those stakeholders are generally end users, uh, people that are supporting and maintaining the system, uh, bill payers, beneficiaries, and victims. Um, in some cases, uh, for example, in the purchase of military systems, the bill payers don't actually use the system. So, um, so they're not uh, end users, and sometimes there are challenges associated with uh, the bill payers who may not fully understand the operations and the people out in the field who are going to receive the, the system or the product when it's developed. Um, so those are all the stakeholders associated with the operations, and there's also stakeholders associated with the um, development and manufacturing, uh, distribution, and supply chain of the systems, and that's kind of an integrated product team, an IPT, but those people are also uh, stakeholders, although not technically operational stakeholders. So the System Engineering Handbook defines the outputs, inputs, activities for the uh, stakeholder needs and requirements definition process. Uh, starting with on the right-hand side with the output, uh, we've got a stakeholder requirement specification. And that has all of the information that you would typically expect to see in a requirement specification, whether it is requirements in the, the system shell uh, form, or whether it's LML, SysML, or other diagrams. So those outputs are generated by um, a process and uh, activities. And those are a sequence of activities. Uh, you prepare to do the work, and then you do the work. Um, so the three main items are define the stakeholder needs, develop the operational concept and other life cycle concepts, and then transform the stakeholder needs into stakeholder requirements. 
So those are kind of the three main activities. And then, of course, anything that's useful uh, to do that task is considered an input. Um, identification of the major stakeholders, um, uh, the preliminary life cycle concepts, the problem or opportunity statement, and the business requirements. And those are all um, items that come from the previous step in the, um, the business or mission analysis. So the system requirement specification uh, looks like a traditional requirement spec. Um, there is going to be statements, requirement statements, the system shall, as well as SysML and LML diagrams, uh, figures, and, and tables. The, the, just, to, just to put this in context, uh, we, in the previous video, we uh, talked about the business omissions analysis process and generated it, uh, a BRS, a business requirement specification, and that is uh, an input that's used to generate the stakeholder requirement spec that's part of this stakeholder needs and requirements definition process. So just to take a step back and think about this process in plain language, um, it's, uh, it's um, illustrated here on a swim lane process map or an activity diagram. Uh, the first thing on the left hand side is to identify who are the stakeholders and then for each stakeholder identify what the stakeholders do so what the, what role responsibility or activity they have as part of the system the third item is to understand in detail what information is exchanged between the activities and processes of each stakeholder once that's established one can go and uh, measure the performance of each of these processes and as good system engineers, we're always measuring some combination of time, cost, and quality. Um, and so that's for the individual processes. And then number five, when you look at the overall system, the overall sequence of processes, we can start to understand the overall performance. And that includes the race conditions, idle time, utilization, throughput, and many other me measures associated with the overall system. So the, um, the requirements are all documented and um, you know, just using traditional uh, system engineering model-based uh, languages, LML, SysML, and whatever other uh, language one has a preference for. Um, the, the other thing that's important about the stakeholder analysis is that it's important to understand how to avoid fielding a system that cannot be implemented uh, because of uh, what we call stakeholder tensions. Um, so just very briefly, um, the process for doing that is to uh, generate a table that lists all of the stakeholders, a description of their uh, roles and responsibilities, and then very importantly, their objectives. So um, in some cases, the, the idea here is to identify the objectives that are in conflict with each other. So. Um, in, and just to mention that in some cases, some stakeholders might have more than one objective. So, for example, um, if we are a uh, uh, if we own a home that's uh, that's located near a planned transportation hub, on the one hand, that benefits us by um, um, by ha having access to this transportation hub, and then on the other hand, it it may um, we may become victims. Uh, as a result of increased taxes, noise, congestion, and other negative effects. So it's possible for stakeholders to kind of have split personalities and um, be both in cooperation and, and exhibit attention. So that's the stakeholder and objectives uh, table. And then associated with that is a stakeholder interactions diagram that um, one way to, to draw this is to do a supplier-consumer relationship. Um, so the supplier provides a service and the consumer pays for the service. So many times this relationship is a, is a cooperative reinforcing relationship, but sometimes there can be some tensions and those are shown on the right-hand side. Um, typically uh, an example is there's going to be tension between management and workers management are trying to deliver uh, a system according to the requirements on a fixed schedule and a fixed budget. And of course, the workers are trying to develop a system with the highest product quality. And uh, sometimes that means taking more time or, or, or costing more. Um, so there's some tensions there. 
Another example of an archetype in which the relationship has tensions is when uh, uh, workers are stuck between management and unions. And so that's an inherent tension. So by generating these stakeholder diagrams, we can identify these tensions. We can seek solutions to these tensions as part of the design of the system, uh, rather than waiting for the system to be filled and then having to solve them with political solutions. So one of the um, interesting things is uh, with regards to stakeholder uh, um, analysis and eliciting stakeholder needs is a relatively new approach called the Lean Startup. Um, so Lean Startup has many very useful, powerful characteristics, but one of them is to avoid sitting in, in headquarters and trying to figure out what your customers' uh, needs are. And so part of the Lean Startup is to go out and ask purchases and customers what job they do, walk in their shoes, and listen. Um, so a, a big part of that interviewing process is not selling your product and asking them if this product will improve or solve their problem, but rather go out and test your hypotheses about your customer's process and experience and then, based on that, generate solutions that, that might work. So the main idea here is, is to not um, check with the stakeholders whether they like your solution, but to go and listen carefully to their pain points within their process and develop solutions based on that. So that brings us to the end of the uh, video presentation. Um, here is a See What You Know quiz. Um, for the stakeholder needs and requirements definition process. And what I'd ask you to do at this time is to uh, pause the button, uh, hit the pause button and uh, jot down answers to these uh, seven questions, which were all part of the learning objectives. And after you've completed that, you can go to the next uh, uh, slide, you can hit play. And uh, the, this gives you the answers to, uh, to those questions so you can test yourself. So again, to uh, test yourself, hit the pause button, and once you're ready, you can continue with the, with the video. So thank you so much for uh, participating in the uh, video number three, uh, Stakeholders' Needs and Requirements Definition Process. The next video, video four, is the System Requirements Definition Process. And if you um, found the video useful and enjoyed it, we'd appreciate it if you could give us a thumbs up. Thank you.